And welcome to Book TV's live coverage of the 63rd Annual National Book Awards being held at Cipriani on Wall Street in New York City. It's the reception time and we're on the red carpet, in fact, where some of the book finalists are having their picture taken. There's finalists in poetry, children's or young adult literature, nonfiction, and fiction books. And of course, being Book TV, we focus on the non-fictions. We want to let you know who some of the non-fiction finalists are. And that's Domingo Martinez. His book is called Boy Kings of Texas. Robert Caro, Passage of Power. This is his fourth volume on the LBJ legacy. And of course, uh, Robert Caro has appeared on Q&A and he's also appeared uh, of our coverage at the National Book Festival in September. The late Anthony Shadid has been nominated as well, House of Stone. You may remember that Anthony Shadid died in Syria while uh, covering Syria for the Washington Post. His wife if uh, will be here representing him, and that's Nadra, Nada Bakri. Catherine Boo has been nominated as well in the nonfiction category. Behind the Beautiful Forever is the name of her book. It's about a slum in Mumbai, India. And finally, Anne Applebaum has been nominated for Iron Curtain. That book is just out, and uh, she is scheduled to appear on our Q&A show in December. So you'll be able to see her as well, Robert Caro. We'll be interviewing those authors as we go. We'll be watching the red carpet here as, as uh, some of the uh, um, authors have their picture taken. But right now, we want to talk to the chairman of the National Book Foundation, and this is David Steinberger. Mr. Steinberger is also the head of the Perseus Book Group. That's First right. of all, Mr. Right. Steinberger, if you would tell us, for those who don't know, what is the National Book Award? Right, the National Book Awards are given to the best American books in four categories every year. So fiction, nonfiction, poetry, and young people's literature. And if, if you look at the people who've won this award historically, it's the pantheon, it's the greatest American writers. It's John Updike and Philip Roth and Saul Bellow. So it's, it's a pretty big deal. To, to win this award. And this began 63 years ago. Do That's you right. do you know the history when it began or why it began? Uh, it, it was a group of people who were interested in making sure that great books had the greatest possible impact on the culture and that's still our mission now. Yeah, the first winner was The Man with the Golden Arm, which was later made into this film by uh, starring Frank Sinatra. And, Mr. Steinberger, uh, recently in the New York Times there's an article about the National Book Awards and some of the changes that you as chairman and your team are trying to implement. What are some of those changes? Well, part of it was trying to make the awards as exciting as possible. So you can see we have a red carpet back here and we've got an after party, if you can believe it, and a DJ with a, and actually a waiting list for the after party, which is a whole new thing. But it, it's really not about the glitz. It's really about trying to increase the impact of great books on the culture and uh, we feel we have an incredible list of finalists this year. We're just, we couldn't be more excited. Can any book be nominated in those four categories? Any American, any book uh, written by an American can be nominated in those categories. The publisher has to nominate them. We had over a thousand books nominated this year. David Steinberger, you're also the head of the Perseus Book Group. Could explain what the Perseus Book Group is and some of your imprints. So we're the leading independent uh, publisher in the United States when you include both the books we publish and the books we distribute. In fact, uh, a, couple of our, uh, a couple of our distributed authors, authors that are published by small independent publishers who we distribute, are finalists today, including uh, Dave Eggers, uh, The Hologram for the King. Now, what are some of the imprints that, uh, that come under Perseus? Basic Books, which is known for history and science and books that make you think, and Public Affairs, which is known for politics and, and, uh, and current events. Uh, those would be two. Two examples. David Steinberger is chair of the National Book Foundation and head of the Perseus Group. We appreciate your time this evening nice here at the National nice Book Awards. And we continue our live coverage from the 63rd Annual Book Award, National Book Awards here in New York City. This is one of the uh, nominated books, The Boy Kings of Texas, a memoir, Domingo Martinez. 
is the author. Mr. Martinez now joins us here on the red carpet. If you would, this is a story, this is your story, is that correct? Well, it's, it's uh, primarily my story, but it's uh, also the story of my family. I go back like uh, one generation more and discuss kind of my grandmother's sort of mythology, uh, how she came over to America and how um, ultimately it was uh, that her coming across from Mexico into uh, America that sort of uh, spawned this uh, fantastic first generation American story. Yeah. Mr. Martinez, you were raised in Brownsville, Texas, right on the border. What, what was Brownsville like during your childhood? Um, back then it was, um, I, I experienced it as being uh, racially polarized, uh, uh, kind of in a more economic sort of uh, striation. And uh, we, the, the Brownsville I do uh, was very agriculturally based. Uh, my, my parents uh, ran a trucking business that uh, sort of, that when we were, we were basically farm laborers. And uh, so it was a very kind of a conflicted experience because uh, we would go to school and pretend, you know, like we were wealthier than we were and uh, be very entirely different uh, the people that, we, that who we really are or were. And then we would go home and like live this completely untraditional sort of lifestyle as farm laborers, like my brother and myself primarily. My sisters had a very different experience, but um, ultimately that was uh, what we what we knew and we, what we understood about our environment. Within the family, what were some of the dynamics? Um, my father was uh, Latin, he was Mexican-American, my mother was uh, European-American, and uh, so that kind of created a, a, a very, kind of, sort of a complicated household, and uh, they had a lot of children right away, uh, in the late 60s, early 70s, and, um, and I don't know if this was actually traditional to most, uh, you know, uh, Hispanic or Latin American families, but my sisters were kind of the property of my mother and my brother and myself were sort of the property of my dad and uh, and as being as boys you know working with a father who owns his trucking company we were sort of like the, the sort of indentured laborers for him and my while well, my sisters were living this phenomenally sort of almost you know idyllic lifestyle as you know princesses and so uh, that's and that's kind of the, one of the tensions that I sort of draw from in, early on in the book. Now, how much of your family is still alive, and uh, what did they think of the book, The Boy Kings? Uh, every member of my family is still alive, uh, even, even my grandmother. And uh, while the story is tough and gritty, um, they've actually been uh, supportive. My mother uh, and my father haven't really kind of come to terms with it. Uh, they're, they, they find the stories too painful. To relive, uh, but they're still very supportive of the idea. They they now see the book as a larger text. Uh, and they they see it more as a, a sort of a historical document that's actually affecting a lot of people, uh, because it is. It's um, it's left quite an impression. In people and the for every person that feels uncomfortable with the content of the story, there are uh, thousands more who, for the first time, are feeling heard and seen and uh, and witnessed. Is it being published in Spanish as well? I believe so. My agent is working on those rights. Uh, we had been, uh, and we were discussing that when uh, the National Book Award finalist nomination came up, and so that's kind of interrupted uh, our business conversations. Well, it, it's published by a smaller press, Lions Press. That's correct. 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 And uh, what was your reaction when you found out that you'd been nominated? Uh, I. Uh, First of all, they had to translate what, what it actually meant to, to me because I really, uh, it was so outside my experience. And it, this is my very first book, uh, and uh, you, uh, every other uh, person I'm up against has like won a Pulitzer. They work for the Wall Street Journal, Newsday, etc. You know, and up until six months ago, I was you know uh, managing a print shop in Seattle, selling business cards to Microsoft employees. Uh, so it was kind of a, kind of a shock to the system. And, uh, it, you know, the, the term dark horse gets used quite a bit uh, in regards to, like, my chances here. But um, we, uh, it, it was a, 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 an incredible shift towards the positive. I mean, it's, you know, it's nice to have uh, these dramatic shifts for, uh, for the better in your lives. Because normally they're, when something, something this big happens, it's usually for the negative. But this time it was, like, very much for the positive. So, so we were quite pleased. What is Brownsville like today? And, um, 
it, with my experience with it, uh, when I went back, it was uh, it was like 